Hi there folks, it's Sam here and we're continuing our mini-series of Total War Warhammer, An Old Friend in which, in which we explore the potential DLC and free LC that could come out before now in the release of Total War Warhammer 2. So without further ado, let's cry havoc and let slip the Dogs of War. The Dogs of War were an army in the 5th edition of Tabletop um, and this for me would fit the Old Friend bill. But also, for any Total War fans, the mercenary system will be an old friend. The way the mercenary system worked was, depending on the area of the, uh, the world you were in, there would be a couple of units available to recruit instantly. Now they'd have a higher upkeep um, because of this. And I think we could see this translated to Total War Warhammer, perhaps in the Regiments of Renown uh, panel. Add them on the end, you could have basic crossbows, pikemen and uh, swordsmen as readily available perhaps with multiple units of them but they'd be like double upkeep, really expensive. The rest of the units would be, well they're, they're slightly faction locked um, but they would be slightly more expensive than regular units of their type but not too expensive in that no one would ever use them. I think they should be straight up added to the roster of Estalia, Talia and the Border Princes as Talia is supposed to be the home of the mercenaries and similar to our Italy, um, right about the Renaissance it was all mercenary armies. So if you add it to their rosters that means CA are committing to flesh out um, more of the minor factions. So people will be asking obviously about Kislev being a big one and the Border Princes, Estalia and Talia. Well, there you go, that's them done. Just need Kislev, which they could easily do at some point. But anyway, I'm digressing. For these um, factions, I think they should get heroes, in that they should have a mercenary captain, mercenary wizards, and a paymaster, who, for Estalia, Talia and Border Princes, would reduce the upkeep of their mercenaries. It just makes sense because their military would be based around the mercenaries as opposed to other countries where they invest in military buildings and just happen to sometimes use mercenaries. I think the factions of Estalia, Tilly and Border Princes should be part of this DLC. We should be giving them to play. Again, it just expands the replayability of this game. It gets people attached to the game even more. It gets them hyped for the next game. I just think it'd be a good move in CA's part. Perhaps coupled with a DLC such as the Cult of Ulrich, which I detailed in a previous video, which I'll link this to, um, or perhaps with, or perhaps in addition, um, the Regiments of Renown for the Beastmen and the Wood Elves. That'd be good to see, um, or Chaos as well, because they have said there'll be no DLC for DLC, but there could be free LC for DLC. You never know. Now, the only faction that does not get any um, mercenaries whatsoever is the Bretonian faction, because they're too honourable. And this is also an argument for me to have the Estalia, Talia and Border Princes in the game, because similar to Bretonia, they have most of the roster there already. You would just have to add a few units. So I think this could work. And they could certainly dig up a few legendary lords for them as well. But I'm going to get stuck into the units now. So first of all we have Vespero's Vendetta, which is basically an assassin's unit, um, light infantry, available only, um, sorry, available to everyone except Bretonia. They have the Stalker trait, the Fear trait, short range weapons such as throwing daggers, um, similar to the, the throwing axes of the rangers. They would have low leadership, they would be fast moving, and they'd have a sort of ward save or missile save because of their cloak and dagger mechanic. Basically, they're swishy, their cloaks are swishy, they could dodge attacks. They're equipped with light armour, throwing daggers and daggers. Pretty standard fare. Next we have the Giants of Albion, and I'd love to see Albion put in this game, but I don't think we ever will. They're far too minor a faction. Although, they probably have the same amount of units as Araby does, but anyway. They would have the traits of terror, Armour piercing and anti-infantry, because they're giants. And they'd be equipped with great weapons, 
probably clubs, um, perhaps, because they're a bit more, the Giants are given a, a, a poor rap, I feel, in Warhammer, they're actually more intelligent than people think, um, they're originally descended from the Sky Titans, but anyway, I'm digressing, so the Giants of Albion in the tabletop are available to only Dogs of War armies, which would mean in our case only Estalia, Talia, Border Princes, could work, um, that way, or they might give it to everyone, I'd kind of like to see that I think. But moving on, we have Parazzo's Lost Legion, um, not available to Bretonia, not available to the Vampire Counts, they are Pike Infantry, with a twist, they're a bit like the Free Company Militia, they have their anti-large charge defence and their decent melee combatants, and they're quick with pikes and crossbows in a sort of mix. Although I think in the in CS case in Total War they give them both, as opposed to some have pikes, some have crossbows. Um, it'd be more of a composite unit then, which would be kind of annoying. And they have light armor. Next we have Rico's Republican Guard. These are again pike infantry. They're not available to Bretonia. They're kind of like halberdiers. They have anti-large armor piercing. Charge defense versus large, and they're armored. They have pikes and heavy armor. Next, we have Bjorg Bearstruck and the Beermen of Urslo. The Beermen, sorry, not Beermen. That'd be nice though. Um, they have the traits of frenzy, shielded, and unbreakable. These are basically Norskin raiders, which is you'll see in a minute why they're not available to certain factions. So they have light armor, shields, and hand weapons, such as axes or maces. And they're unavailable to Bretonia, the Lizard Men, the High Elves, and the Wood Elves, because they basically worship chaos. Next, we have Volans Venators, who are a heavy cavalry unit. They are anti infantry, shielded, and armoured. They have lances, shields, heavy armour, and hand weapons. And they're not available to Bretonia, because let's be honest, Bretonia does not need more heavy cavalry. And next, we have Alcatani Fellowship. Which is another spear um, unit. They have charge defense versus large, anti large, um, and they are equipped with spears and light armor. They're unavailable to Bretonia. Next, we have the Marksman of Miragliano, which is a city we already see in Total War. They are decent melee combatants with a good range. Basically, they have light armor, a crossbow, and a hand weapon. The way I view this is the Parazzo's Lost Legion would be pikemen with crossbows. These are crossbowmen with hand weapons. It's as simple as I can put it, probably. They're unavailable to Bretonia and the Skaven. Next, we have probably my favourite of these, um, Al Mukhtar's Desert Dogs. They are very fast light cavalry. They have shielded. They're equipped with hand weapons, light armour, Arabian horses, which are very fast, and shields. And they're unavailable to Bretonia and Kemri, which is the Tomb Kings. Next we have the lone lord or hero character um, in this list. And it's Asarnil the Dragon Lord. Who is a high elf riding the dragon, basically. Um, he would have a really high upkeep. He would have the flying trait, breath weapon, um, missile save, terror, anti-large and armoured. He would have a sword, a lance, a shield and heavy armour. And he's only available to the High Elf, the Wood Elf, the Lizard Men, and the Empire. Um, he's one of these units we might not see until more um, content comes out. Because he seems more a Total War Warhammer 2 unit. But but what I'll say, um, and it applies to a couple more units, is perhaps what we'll do is, well we've got the models anyway for Total War Warhammer 2. Plug them in early and give people a wee look. So, if they've come up with High Elves on dragons yet, plug it in. Next we have Lumping Croups Fighting Cocks, basically halflings. They have bows, shields, light armour um, and a hand weapon. So they're skirmishers, they're shielded and they are decent melee combatants because halflings are quite stabby. They are not available to Bretonia, there's a shock. <laughs> Next we have another one of the units I think might be limited to Total War Warhammer 2. Or after Total War Warhammer 2's release, which is Tichi Hoochie's Raiders, which are skinks, um, which are a type of lizard men, on the back of cold ones, which are raptors. 
They cause fear, they have scaly skin, which is similar to light armour. Cold blooded, which is equivalent to a high leadership or a resistance to psychology. They're anti-large and they're shielded. They are riding cold ones, they have spears, shields and hand weapons. Now because the Lizardmen are dead set against any race that's not part of the Great Plan, um, Chaos can't hire them, Chaos Dwarfs can't hire them, Vampire Counts can't hire them, Skaven can't hire them, the Tomb Kings can't hire them, uh, Betonia obviously can't hire them, and I think Beastmen probably couldn't hire them either. Um, firstly because whether or not the Beastmen should be allowed to hire human people, I don't know, I think they just eat them. But secondly, um, the Beastmen aren't applied in any of these cases, so I wonder if Beastmen maybe weren't out till after this edition, and that's why they're not here. Because I'd be very surprised if Lizardmen would work with Beastmen, who are very chaos orientated. Next we have Long John's Slayer Pirates, no Long John Silver connection there, who are basically slayers with boatloads of pistols. So if I read their traits, they are anti-large, fast for a dwarf, they have death blow, they're unbreakable and a fast reload rate. Their equipment literally just says loads of pistols. So imagine the slayer with the trousers. Uh, the stripy trousers and just loads of bandoliers stuck with pistols everywhere, just firing them off. A wee, a wee unit that just emanates bullets. Um, it'd be quite cool would be to see. So it's unavailable to Bretonia, the Chaos Dwarves, the Wood Elves, the High Elves, and the Orcs and Goblins. Next we have Leopold's Leopard Company, which is another pike unit. It's anti-large, charge defense versus large, but also immune to psychology. Um, because the men in this unit believe so much that if they, they die as good warriors they'll go to heaven that they're not going to run away so they're equipped with pikes and late armour and they're unavailable to Bretonia next we have Goldfag's Ogres which is again unavailable to Bretonia they're going to cause fear, they're anti-infantry, they're armoured they have great weapons and heavy armour so again, these units might not be seen until DLC for the second game, or uh, the third game, but how hard would the ogres be to do compared to the trolls and the um, the other things? Perhaps that, that is hard enough and we won't see them, but you never know. Next we have the birdmen of Catraza, or Catraza? Don't know, my Italian's poor, um, which are available only to the Empire. They're kind of like a, a flying missile unit. They have the flying trait, they are decent melee combatants and they can shoot while moving. They have light crossbows and hand weapons. Basically, as far as I can tell, their wings are powered by stirrups in their feet, which allows them two or three hands to shoot with. So, hey ho. Next we have Bronzino's Galloper Guns, which are available to everyone except Bretonia. They are fast for artillery, armour piercing, good range and small calibre. So they're not going to do tremendous damage, they're not going to shoot from miles away, but because they can get away fast, you can take them in that wee bit closer. And the crew is equipped with hand weapons. Finally we have Bragonza's Besiegers, which are unavailable to Bretonia and the Skaven. They have good range, armoured and shielded. They have crossbows and heavy armour. Basically the way this unit works is similar to the Pavese crossbowmen, um, of Venice and Milan in Medieval 2 and obviously the real world um, basically the big huge shield's placed in front of the crossbowman he loads his crossbow he opens the shield up to shoot comes back and he just runs to repeat um, and it's good we have not getting your uh, crossbowman dead uh, even if they do get into melee combat perhaps they should have decent melee combat here actually because if they do get into melee combat they're going to survive a while because of the heavy armour and shields um, they're not going to do the best damage back, but hey, who cares? So that takes us to the end of the units. So we're left going, okay, what have we got? We've got the units, we've got heroes, we've got the factions of Estalia, Talia and Border Princes. Now, could that all be included in, as free LC? I think so. I think they will. Um, with the regiments around for other races, still is DLC, uh, free LC? That's a bit much to release at once, so I don't don't think so. But if they were to turn this into a DLC, I'd expect it to be a good bit cheaper and with 
perhaps extra units added in for the factions, such as conquistadors, which will become important in the next game. So they're not even they're they're, they're helping themselves with this because it gives them they'll have to improve um, these factions for the next game. Why not improve them now and keep people happy? But anyway, um, let me know how you're enjoying this series. It was just a little one I had a, an inkling for. I saw a lot of people kept posting about um, what is old friend DLC. Tell us old friend DLC. Come on, give us information. And I thought, well, if people are obviously interested, why not make videos for them? So if you have any ideas, leave them a wee comment on what you want me the video to do next. Um, I could do other friends of the Empire. Um, I'm thinking about doing Keyslev, but... Um, Possibly today and tomorrow I'm going to do other videos um, in different series. Perhaps stay away from um, Warhammer or at least from the old friend area of it. Um, so if you leave me a comment, let me know what you think on the idea. Let me know what you think on my future videos. If you're enjoying the content, leave a like. If you want to see more of the content, subscribe. Anyway, I've been Sam and I'll catch you later. Cheers to the note.